Hey Zelda fans, this is Elu from MedsPyro.org and this is Kulu Limpa. <laughs> Before I start, I want to mention that there is going to be a Taylor Davis giveaway for the album Melodies from Hyrule. On MedsPyro.org, there is an interview with Taylor Davis where Louie Davis talks to her about her wonderful, awesome music and its creation, so check it out because it is amazing. All you have to do is comment to have a chance to win said album. Why not we're just giving stuff away? Like, aren't we awesome? I know we are. Right? So before we start answering questions, because that is what we do, I have a little something amazing to show you guys because I haven't seen it myself yet, but I'm gonna see it with you. So I have an unboxing to do. So here is a box. This box is full of something awesome. Joshua Gunn made this, and um, it's kind of amazing. And I know it's amazing, even though I haven't opened it yet, but we're gonna open it together and you can see the made in the box. So take my scissors and Should I do that? I don't know. I really, maybe, 
I don't know. I'll think about it. But right now, my favorite is A Link to the Past. I know it's always flip-flopping right now between The Link to the Past and The Wind Waker, but ever since I played Link Between Worlds, which really isn't one of my favorites, it just made me appreciate A Link to the Past even more. Because, I mean, you have that open exploration, which is fantastic, but still a little bit of linearity, which I think helps the game feel a little, I don't know, more dense. I mean, there's something that's a little more fun to me than just being able to go anywhere I want. If I go somewhere and I see that, oh, I can get just just this far, but I can't quite get as far as I want to go, I need something else. And then I go elsewhere and I discover that thing that I needed and I go back and I'm like, oh, I can explore more. I think that's more fun. I also like the difficulty of Link to the Past. I mean, all these games just, they're too easy now. Maybe I'm just that good, which I'm probably not. I'm, I'm really not that good. So it's just, I think it's becoming obvious to me that Zelda games are becoming more, more, more easy. And I just, I miss that challenge. Plus Link Between Worlds proved that A Link to the Past had a beautiful and amazing soundtrack. I'm so glad that so many of those themes were, you know, made all pretty and stuff, but there's still those old things that I loved in the first place. My favorite songs come from A Link to the Past. So, right now, it's back to A Link to the Past. I'm sure he'll change again to The Wind Waker. Who knows something crazy like Skyward Sword? What? Yuki Warrior asks, in the Four Swords manga, why is Link's father not shown to have any resemblance to Link? It really comes down to Akita Kimikawa's art style. The interesting thing about their style is that knight type character they always draw tends to look pretty much the same. I mean, not exactly the same, but have the same um, like physical attributes and characteristics across all the different mangas. It's just the way they draw. I think you have to take age into consideration the style of the artwork. Most of the time it's anime, and anime old men look way different from children and teenage guys. I mean, those tend to look more feminine in design. And then when they get older, that's when they become more masculine looking like in real life. But I think it's it's stressed more in anime and um, that's just that's just the way they draw. I don't think it has really anything to do with the story or anything like that. That's just how they want it to look. And the way they look works. He looks valiant, he looks strong, he looks noble. I mean, it works. The Pretzel Twister asks, are there any other characters in the franchise besides Tilda that you either don't understand the fandom of or that you just find especially annoying? So many people love Ezlo. And the weird thing is, I love Midna, but Midna is pretty much just a ripoff of, of Ezlo. I mean, same type of thing going on throughout the whole game. But Ezlo just annoyed me. I think maybe it's because I just couldn't find myself being attached to him. With Midna and Link, I think there's more like a partner type of relationship being built. But with Ezlo and Link, it just kind of seemed like this old man nagging at you the entire time. If they had made it seem more like a grandpa figure, then I probably would have liked him, but he just annoyed me and he wouldn't show up and I wanted to hurl my Game Boy out the window. And then of course there's Thief, or Five, or whatever you want to call her. Let's just call her annoying. And it sucks because I really, really wanted a lover. I really didn't. And at the end, when, do you know, she says, Nibble me in another life, I was like, oh, Master Sword, Master Sword, Master Sword. And it totally hit me. But then I was sad because I could have really cared about this character if they hadn't made her so annoying about the game. And if they had, I think I would have been affected so much more. I mean, I was like falling apart when she said that and I was all touched and whatnot, but I think I would have been on the crown just crying. But you know what fandom love I just can't understand? Really? Out of everybody? Vati. Why Vati? He is so weird. First of all, I don't like purple. Maybe that's part of it. I know so many people like purple, but things that are purple, I don't like them. But anyway, I mean, He's not as cool as people make him out to be. I think so much of it comes from like fan head canon. I mean, like sort of like how Dark Link is all popular even though he isn't a real person with any real feelings or ideas or his own thoughts or anything like that. People still, you know, most of his popularity comes from fan created stuff. And I think that's kind of how it is for Bati because Bati was a little butthole. And I don't know, I just found him, I didn't find him menacing in any way. And I thought the little sound chip they had for him where he laughs, he just sounded like an evil Mickey Mouse. I couldn't take him seriously. Plus, I just, I don't have any sort of love or respect for any character that is a brat. I don't like bratty characters. He was just a spoiled little punk. And all he needed was a good kick in the nuts. Or, I guess, pre-nuts, because he was a child and obviously hadn't hit puberty yet. Maybe if he had, he would have been mature enough to just chill out, man, and not steal hats and stuff, because that's something totally ghetto kids do and then go to the mall and steal hats. But yeah, I just, I don't like Vati. I never will. I never have, never will. 
I just think he's stupid. Now if they had made him really truly like a wind mage type character, which he's supposed to be, but if they had made it cool like him using these ferocious wind spells and something more than little gusts and whatnot and the stupid eyeball thing he turns into, whatever, then I think he could have been a lot cooler. He's one of those characters that had so much potential and just blah. So that is it for this week's mailbag. Remember to check out Night to Hyrule. There's awesome stuff going on, giveaways and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next week.